Hello and welcome back to this course, Critical Learnings on Forest and Adivasi Rights, where we continue to learn about the linkages of the Forest Rights Act of 2006 or FRA with the Constitution of India and other laws, including the Panchayat's Extension to Scheduled Areas Act 1996 or PESA. In the last lecture, we learnt about fundamental rights and the duties of the state towards Adivasis living in scheduled areas. We learnt that the fundamental rights of Adivasis must be understood together with Article 244 and the fifth schedule to the Constitution. In this lecture, we will discuss the constitutional roots of PESA and its salient features in some detail. This will help us discover PESA's significance in ensuring substantive equality for Adivasis through self-governance. The Constitution of India acknowledges that the scheduled areas need a special administrative mechanism for local self-government owing to their historical differences from other parts of India. These differences are recognized in Article 244, which requires that the administration and control of the scheduled areas and scheduled tribes should be in accordance with the provisions of the fifth schedule of the Constitution. Local self-government institutions are found in both scheduled as well as non-scheduled areas. This includes the Gram Sabhas and the elected Panchayats at the village, subdivision and district level. However, the constitution itself requires that when extending the mechanism of Panchayats to scheduled areas, this must be modified to comply with Article 244 and the 5th schedule. Therefore. The Parliament enacted the Panchayat's Extension to Scheduled Areas Act or PESA in 1996. PESA extends the constitutional and legal provisions relating to the Panchayats to fifth schedule areas with some changes in the form of exceptions and modifications. This law was based on the recommendations of the Bhuriya Committee as a framework for a separate governance mechanism in scheduled areas. PESA is the law enacted by Parliament towards this end. It enumerates the exceptions and modifications which must be made in the laws relating to panchayats when extending these to scheduled areas. Naturally, PESA is not a self-activating law and therefore the state governments are obliged to amend state-level laws to ensure conformity with PESA. This includes state-level Panchayati Raj laws as well as other related laws such as the land revenue codes, money lending laws and so on. If the state government has not amended a particular law and there is a conflict between PESA and that law, then it is PESA which will prevail. All 10 fifth schedule states have amended their Panchayati Raj laws. However, not all provisions of these Panchayati Raj laws are in consonance with PESA. Some of these states have made rules for the implementation of PESA in the scheduled area of their state. The core principles of PESA are as follows. Firstly, the Gram Sabha is at the center of administration of fifth schedule areas under PESA and this Gram Sabha must be formed at the level of the smallest habitation which could be a hamlet or a village. Second, the laws relating to panchayats made by the state governments should be in consonance with the customary law, social and religious practices and traditional management practices of the Adivasi communities. Thirdly, through Gram Sabhas, the Adivasi communities have the freedom to decide for themselves what good governance means to them, of course, within constitutional boundaries. Thus, PESA states that the Gram Sabhas are competent to safeguard and preserve their customs and traditions, their cultural identity, community resources and customary modes of dispute resolution. To comprehend the importance of these salient features, an understanding of the village, the Gram Sabha and the elected Panchayat is essential. The formation of the Gram Sabha at the Panchayat level may defeat the purpose of this law for effective decentralized self-governance in the fifth schedule area. First of all, under PESA, the Gram Sabha plays a crucial role in the administration of a fifth schedule area. PESA defines the Gram Sabha as all adult members of the village whose names are in the electoral rules. Secondly, PESA defines a village as habitation or group of habitations or a hamlet or a group of hamlets 
comprising a community and managing its affairs in accordance with traditions and customs. Most state Panchayati Raj laws have defined village in scheduled areas in accordance with the PESA definition. For example, the Jharkhand Panchayati Raj Act defines village as a group of residences or tolas or a group of tolas that comprises a community. Tola is a smaller unit within the village consisting of residences. This community manages the affairs of their village according to their customs and usages. Gram Sabhas should be formed at the smallest level such as Tola, Pada, Hamlet or village level. Thirdly, the Panchayat is the executive arm of the Gram Sabha. Panchayati Raj laws passed by the state governments generally have a three-tier Panchayat system. First is the Gram Panchayat of five or more elected representatives covering a couple of villages or more. Then there is the Panchayat Samiti or Janpad Panchayat which consists of elected representatives at the block level. And finally the Zilla Panchayat constituted at the district level with elected representatives. Section 4N of PESA states that the elected panchayats should not assume the powers of the Gram Sabha. The Act specifically requires this to ensure that panchayats carry out their duties of implementing projects, plans and programs without strong arming the Gram Sabha. In fact, the panchayats are duty bound to take the approval of the Gram Sabha for implementing any plans, programs or projects. Any conversation on scheduled areas must address the problem of land alienation. Tribal land alienation is a historical problem stemming from the colonial and post-colonial independence which led to forcible looting of Adivasi lands by the non-Adivasis. PESA makes an effort to prevent illegal and unfair land acquisition of tribal lands and its alienation to non-tribals. To begin with, PESA makes it mandatory to seek prior consultation with the Gram Sabha or Panchayats at the appropriate level in case of acquisition of land for developmental purposes or for rehabilitating people affected by such projects in the scheduled areas. Unfortunately, while incorporating this requirement into the state laws, Several state governments have vested this authority with the Zilla Parishad or the Panchayat Samiti. Adivasi movements and rights-based organizations feel that this is incorrect. PESA requires that consultation should be held with the Gram Sabha and such consultation should satisfy the requirements of free, prior and informed consent. This means that the Gram Sabha should not be coerced to give its consent. The Gram Sabha should be fully informed about the impact of a project on their social, economic, cultural and political rights. Suppression of information will vitiate the consent and the government should complete the process of consultation before making any decision about a development project. Secondly, the law places strict restrictions on transfer of tribal lands to non-tribals. In the Samta versus State of Andhra Pradesh judgment, the Supreme Court of India held that government land, forest land and tribal land in scheduled areas cannot be leased out to private entities or non-tribals. The government cannot lease out lands in scheduled areas for mining operations to non-tribals as it is in contravention of the fifth schedule of the constitution. The court recognized that Gram Sabhas are competent to safeguard and preserve community resources and have a right to self-governance. The Constitutional Court was conscious of the fact that granting a mining lease or permission for any development work to an outside entity in the scheduled areas will negatively impact the socio-economic and cultural life of the Adivasis. In this regard, PESA imposes a duty on the state government to empower the Gram Sabha in scheduled areas to stop the alienation of tribal land. Most state laws on prevention of tribal land alienation give powers to the district administration to prevent such alienation. For example, the Orissa Regulation of 1956 on transfer of immovable property by scheduled tribes, also known as OSATIP, does not envisage any role for the Gram Sabha in the prevention of land alienation. Even the role of the Gram Panchayat is limited to informing the district collector about illegal alienation of tribal land. 
the power for prevention of land alienation remains with the district collector. Similarly, the Andhra Pradesh Panchayati Raj law provides that the Gram Sabha shall prepare a list of landholders and verify the claim of the occupants over land. If the Gram Sabha thinks that a non-tribal person is occupying the land of a tribal, it has the power to pass a resolution and forward it to the competent authority. But the competent authority under the 1970 regulation remains the district administration. We will now discuss the powers of Gram Sabhas to safeguard and protect community resources. Apart from land, other community resources such as streams and ponds, forest produce like fruits, vegetables and medicinal herbs, fodder and fuel wood, all these are critical to the dignity and way of life of Adivasis. These community resources provide the nutritional, health care and livelihood requirements of Adivasis and forest dwellers and also the basic water requirements for consumption and irrigation. PESA specifically recognizes the Gram Sabha's power to control and manage these resources. To fully understand the resource governance powers of the Gram Sabha, we will now discuss its powers relating to minor water bodies, minor forest produce and minor minerals. The term minor water bodies is not defined in the law, but it's generally understood to mean local water sources like springs, ponds, wells, streams and small canals. According to PESA, the Gram Sabha or the Panchayat at the appropriate level has the authority to plan and manage minor water bodies. We argue that minor water bodies are essential for meeting the everyday consumption needs of people and therefore it is the Gram Sabhas which must have control over these sources of water. Larger sources of water such as irrigation projects should be within the domain of the Zilla Parishad. Minor forest produce or MFP is crucial for nutritional and healthcare needs of Adivasis and also a key source of livelihood. MFP is defined under various forest laws. The most relevant definition is under the Forest Rights Act, which defines MFP as including all non-timber forest produce that comes from plants, such as bamboo, cane, tusser, cocoons, honey, tendu leaves, medicinal plants and herbs, roots and tubers, and so on. According to PESA, the ownership rights of MFP are vested in the Gram Sabha. This ownership right under PESA should be read together with the forest right to MFP under FRA. In FRA, the right to MFP has been broadly defined and includes not only the right to collect such produce, but also to process it and do value addition and transport it for consumption and sale. Minor minerals are defined under the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act and usually include building stone, gravel, clay, sand and so on. Under PESA, the prior recommendation of the Gram Sabha is mandatory for any kind of lease for the extraction of minor minerals and also before the auction of a mining lease for mining minerals. So the Gram Sabha has considerable control over the minor minerals in its area but does not have ownership rights. We will discuss this in detail in lecture 2.5. PESA has given various degrees of control to the Gram Sabha over these resources based upon their importance in the everyday life of Adivasis. As we have seen in previous lectures, the ability of Adivasi communities to exercise control over their resources was severely eroded during the colonial regime. PESA aims to remedy this historical injustice and further the constitutional mandate of substantive equality. Apart from that, Gram Sabhas in scheduled areas have been given regulatory powers over certain aspects of social life as well. Under the state Panchayati Raj laws, this is achieved through the Gram Panchayats, which function under the guidance and supervision of the Gram Sabhas. This includes 1. Control of village markets, 2. Control of money lending, and 3. Control over consumption and sale of intoxicants, including alcohol. For example, under the Chhattisgarh Panchayati Raj law of 1993, it is the Gram Panchayat which regulates and manages the local market 
but this is done under the direction and supervision of the Gram Sabha. The most exhaustive list of the Gram Sabha's power to manage markets is given in the Maharashtra PESA rules, including things like ensuring that the weights and measurements are genuine, prohibition of gambling, and so on. PESA requires that the Gram Sabha should have the power to regulate and control money lending in its area. This includes the registration of money lenders, fixation of the rate of interest, ensuring that money lending is not carried out illegally, and dispute resolution. All 10 5th scheduled states have laws regulating money lending in the scheduled areas, but only a few have given this power to the Gram Sabha. Some states, such as Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, and Telangana, have outright denied the registration of money lending licenses in scheduled areas. Other states have put the responsibility on the Gram Panchayat. Similarly, PESA requires that the Gram Sabha or Panchayats at the appropriate level shall have the power to prohibit, regulate, or restrict the sale and use of intoxicants. This could include traditional liquors such as Tadi, Hariya, liquor made from Mahua, and also Indian made liquor. Several states have amended their local excise laws to permit the use of traditional liquor in scheduled areas. Historically, there are clear linkages between land alienation of Adivasis and the problems relating to money lending and the use of intoxicants. Five states have provided for prior consultation with or prior permission from the Gram Sabha before opening any new liquor factory or shop in a scheduled area. These are Andhra Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Telangana. The remaining five fifth scheduled states do not clearly define the Gram Sabha's power with regard to intoxicants. However, since PESA recognizes the broad contours of this power, there is nothing to prevent such assertion in these fifth scheduled states as well. Finally, we will discuss reservation of panchayat seats for scheduled tribes in the scheduled areas. Recognizing the importance of political representation of the Adivasis in scheduled areas, PESA provides for at least 50% reservation of seats in the panchayats and also reserves all seats of chairpersons of the panchayats at all levels for scheduled tribes. In a well-known case from Jharkhand called Union of India vs. Rakesh Kumar, Several non-tribals challenged the reservations of all the seats of chairpersons of the panchayats for the scheduled tribes in scheduled areas. They argued that this violated the right to equality and also amounted to 100% reservation. The Supreme Court disagreed and rejected this challenge. The court held that these reservations for tribals in the elected panchayat bodies is necessary to ensure their participation in local self-governance in these areas. It is an immediate measure to protect their rights and safeguard their interests, quite different from reservations in educational institutions and government jobs, which are aimed at long-term social and economic upliftment. The court upheld the provision in PESA and the Jharkhand Panchayati Raj law, which reserves all seats of chairpersons of panchayats in scheduled areas for tribals. In this lecture, we have learned that PESA is the outcome of the state's effort to promote self-governance in scheduled areas through Panchayati Raj systems in harmony with traditional governance systems. PESA acknowledges the customs and traditions of Adivasi society as a legitimate mode of governance within the constitutional framework. It is a bold step towards democratizing resource governance which is one of the foremost duties of the state under the directive principles of state policy. Democratizing resource governance is also essential to ensure a dignified and wholesome life for Adivasis. We have also seen that many legal mandates enshrined in PESA are not fully incorporated in state-level laws and sometimes have been completely changed. Thus, the objective and aspiration of PESA remains an unfinished and continuing agenda. In the next part of this course, we will learn about the Forest Rights Act in detail. In this process, we will also learn how FRA picks up the idea of grassroots governance of community resources from PESA 
and advances it to forests not only in scheduled areas but throughout the country. Thank you for watching.